Well, hello guys. I know this isn't in the morning. I know this isn't how we planned it. And I'm sure sorry that I missed you this morning, but there was problems with the technical part of it that I just could not control. So I'm glad you're joining me whenever you are. And uh, I want you to know that we have um, a great lesson in front of us today. Last week, you know, we heard a lesson about the greatest news ever. The greatest news ever was that Christ rose from the dead. That is the greatest news for the apostles and for the followers in that day. And it's the greatest news still for us today. It is the best news ever that Jesus raised from the dead. And if you remember, we talked about that Jesus uh, was crucified on a Friday and then Saturday was silent. The Bible doesn't tell us anything what happened on that Sabbath day. And then the third day, Sunday, was the day that Jesus rose from the dead. And the important thing about that is that Jesus said he would raise on the third day. Old Testament prophecy said he would raise on the third day. So that's really important to know that he rose on the third day after he died. Well, when Jesus rose, the first person he appeared to was Mary. If you remember, she was so excited. She was so happy because she had been crying, crying, crying at the tomb. And then she saw that her Lord, her Jesus, was alive. And she was so happy. She went back and she told the apostles. They didn't believe her. They ran back and saw the tomb. And remember what they saw? They didn't see Jesus, but they did see the empty tomb. They had not seen him yet. But then Jesus was on the road to Emmaus. And if you remember right, he was, um, he met two men walking on that road and talked and walked with them and went to their home with them even. And at that time, when he sat down and he broke bread with them, they realized it was Jesus. So here's two more, Cleopas and another man. They know Jesus is alive. He has risen from the dead, and they are really excited about that. Now, the apostles, they run back to tell the apostles, and the apostles are in a closed room. The room is locked. And I want you to think about why they are in a closed room with locked doors. If you remember, there was a very angry crowd that crucified Jesus. There was a lot of people who wanted him dead. And there was a lot of people that were very happy when he was crucified. They didn't believe that he was the savior. They did not believe that um, he was their Messiah that they had been waiting for. And they wanted him gone. But after three days, he was not gone anymore. That tomb was empty. Well, they were afraid that his followers may have um, stolen his body. Um, but this is what they were so angry about, that empty tomb. No matter what happened to Jesus, they did not have that dead body anymore. And they didn't know what happened at this point. So these apostles are in this locked room with closed doors and they are in there with fear. And all of a sudden, Jesus appears to them, and Jesus says, peace be with you. And they were afraid. They didn't know what was going on. They thought that maybe Jesus was a ghost. And Jesus told them, peace be with them. And then he showed them his hands and his side where he had been pierced. And at that time, they knew this truly was their Jesus that had died on the cross. So they were really happy. They were all convinced. They were so thrilled that Jesus was alive again. But one thing about that room that was closed up that night, um, it was that same Sunday night that Thomas was not in the room with him. So the one apostle did not see Jesus that night. So the other apostles were really excited about this. They told Thomas about it. Thomas, Jesus really is alive. We saw him. He's risen. We saw his hands. We saw his side. 
with Thomas, he did not believe. The Bible doesn't tell us why he doubted. The Bible doesn't say why he didn't believe. But when I think about Thomas, you know, maybe he was upset or disappointed. He was the only one that missed it. Maybe it was just too amazing to be true. For whatever reason, the Bible does tell us Thomas did not believe. And so Thomas, he did not have the joy that the other apostles felt because all this excitement they were feeling, all this joy that they felt, Thomas didn't have it. Well, about a week later, they were gathered together again. And the apostles, like I said, they were filled with joy. They were thrilled because Jesus, they had seen him. They knew it was true. They were together in, a, in that closed room again. The doors were locked. And as they were in that room, all of a sudden, Jesus appeared and he said, peace be with you. And Jesus had not heard Thomas say, I don't believe it. I won't believe it unless I see his hands and his side. I will not believe it. But Jesus said to Thomas, Thomas, reach and touch my hands and see my side where I was pierced. Don't be unbelieving, but be believing. And, and Jesus showed him his hands and his side. And after Thomas saw that, he believed. He had seen it for himself, and now he believes. And, and so Jesus told Thomas, because you have believed, because you saw me, but blessed are those who believe, because, and they have not seen me. When Thomas saw, he said, my Lord and my God, Thomas was truly, truly convinced. So when Jesus told Thomas this, you're, you're blessed because you believe, but more blessed are those who haven't seen, but yet they believe. So who do you think these are that are blessed that haven't seen Jesus, but they still believe? Well, let's just stop about there with that right now, and let's come back to that later. The next time Jesus has an encounter with the apostles, they are up in Galilee. If you look at this map, you can see that they were in Jerusalem down at the bottom. And Jesus told them, meet me in Galilee. And you see that Galilee is quite a, quite a ways north. So they travel up to Galilee and they basically are waiting for Jesus there. And they are by the Sea of Galilee. If you remember when Jesus first called some of his apostles, they were fishermen. And so to be by the sea and to be with boats, it was a very natural thing for them to be. And so when Peter said, hey, I'm going to go fishing, the others went with him. And this was the ones with him were Peter and James and John, Thomas was there, Nathaniel, and then the Bible says, and two friends. So Peter goes out fishing and the rest of them, they decide they'll go fishing with them too. They go out and they fished and fished and fished. They fished all night. Their nets were still empty. They had caught nothing. The very next morning, they were still in the boat and there was a man on shore. Well, we know that that man on shore was Jesus, but the apostles didn't realize it yet. And he yells out to them. He goes, hey, friends, have you caught anything? No, it fished all night. They had not caught a thing. And then he tells them, throw your nets out on the other side of the boat, on the right side of the boat. Well, they did this very thing. And when they did, their nets were so full. Their nets were full of fish, but their nets didn't break. That was kind of unusual because this was a huge catch of fish. So as they're pulling these fish in and they're working out there, John realizes that it was Jesus on shore. 
And he said, Peter, look, it's the Lord. It's Jesus there. Peter was so excited. Peter was so happy. He threw on his outer garment and he jumps in the water and he swims to shore. He could not wait for the boat to get to shore. He couldn't wait one minute longer. He was so excited to go see Jesus. So Peter gets to shore first, and then the others get to shore. And when they do, Jesus was on shore. He had made a fire, and he was cooking fish. He had some bread. And he said, go get some more of your fish. And Jesus, on the beach, by the fire, cooked them breakfast. Can you imagine anything more lovely than eating breakfast on the beach with Jesus? What a wonderful thing that they were able to do. Jesus talked with them and explained things to them and and they wanted to Jesus they wanted Jesus to stay. That must have been such a wonderful thing to have Jesus with them that time and just spend that time with him and enjoy him like old times. Well, Jesus knew his time was short on earth. He was going to be going back to the Father. But the apostles were enjoying their time with Jesus that they had at that time. It was a very special time. And then Jesus took some time to talk to Peter. Now, if you remember when Peter denied Jesus, that was an awful time for Peter. He had said that he did not even know Jesus. He had told people, I don't even know the man. And Peter must have been heartbroken. He must have been sick for the way that he had treated Jesus to tell people, I don't even know him. He was ashamed. He was afraid. So Jesus knew this. Jesus knew Peter's heart. He knew that he was sorry for what he had done. And so when Jesus talked to Peter at this time. It must have meant everything for Peter because when Jesus talked to Peter, he asked him a question. Remember, Peter was also called Simon Peter. He said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Well, Peter told him, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And then Jesus said, Peter, shepherd my sheep. Jesus asked Peter this question three times. Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? And every time Peter said yes, and every time Jesus told him, tend my sheep, shepherd my sheep, feed my sheep. He was making Peter realize that he still loved him. He still needed him. And in spite of the things that Peter had done, even though Peter had denied him, Jesus had a plan for him. Jesus had a wonderful purpose and plan for Peter. And so this was a wonderful thing for Peter because he realizes he can, he's going to go on and do wonderful things. In the our coming weeks, you are going to hear about some amazing things that Peter does. I mean, amazing. He is going to be one of the leaders in Jesus's church. So um, this is a great day for Peter. For now, we're gonna end our story here. And next week we'll of course pick up where we left off. But to think about for a few minutes, I want you to think Thomas had doubts. Sometimes we have doubts. What should we do when we have doubts? What are we supposed to do? The other question is, how do we see Jesus today? Because, you know, you, there was people in our lesson this week and last week, they didn't recognize Jesus when they first saw him. So how do we see Jesus? We can't see him like others saw him in, our, in the lessons that we've heard about. And the last question is, who are the blessed that have not seen Jesus but still believe? That question has a wonderful answer because the answer to that question is you, is each one of you. You've not seen Jesus, 
I asked you, how can we see Jesus today? This is how we can see Jesus today. The only way we can see Jesus today is through his word. We can read and study about his miracles, his parables, his teachings, his love, what made him happy, what made him angry, what pleases him. This is how we see him today. And we watch other people who are living as Jesus followers, and we can see Jesus living in their lives too. So that's how we see Jesus today. But we are blessed because we haven't seen Jesus, but yet we believe. We believe because we read and study the word and we know what he did. And we believe that it's true with all our hearts. And if you have doubts, the answer is the same thing as knowing how to please him. You read, you study, you pray. That's what you do when you have doubts. You don't give up like Thomas. He came back. He believed. Peter, he messed up. He came back and he believed. And he went on to do great things for Jesus. Just like us, we can go on and do great things for Jesus no matter what happens. So until next week, Miss Tina is going to teach you another lesson next week, and it's going to be a really great one. I know it's more, it's another good news story. So Miss Tina will be with you then. And until then, it's time to say goodbye. But I want to tell you, I'm really glad, even if it's late, I'm glad that uh, we got to be together. So you guys have a great week. Um, enjoy your day, rest of your day today, and take care of yourselves.